a bit confused. Um, and then it quickly became apparent that no, something was happen happening inside Lint Cafe. Now, our cameras were quick to set up and obviously we're right next door, we've been bringing those pictures ever since, but as you rightly report, the police have quickly moved in to also take advantage of this spot. They've been uh, coordinating their uh, response to this incident uh, from that level and all of the buildings surrounding. This place is completely surrounded by police. We won't go into too much detail about what they are doing, obviously, uh, for obvious tactical reasons there, but they are watching very carefully and trying to assess exactly what is going on inside. As we all are right now, our hopes and our hearts are with the people, the employees and the customers that are trapped inside this cafe. Uh, we can only imagine what they are going through right now. I spoke to one police officer outside who thought that only one uh, assailant was, uh, was inside the building at this time. I haven't been able to confirm that. It seems unlikely, I think, now to have that this many people uh, held by one person. Uh, this is an extremely fragile situation. The building here uh, has all of the exposed uh, offices in this building have been evacuated to a safer point. Uh, it took uh, some 15 minutes to realise the severity of the situation. The police moved into our offices uh, and removed everybody calmly from any visible line of fire in case these guys have some sort of high-powered weapon or gun or indeed explosive. Uh, we don't know what is about to unfold. We perhaps uh, aren't going too far to at least remind viewers that, yes, uh, back in September, during those terrorism raids, the plot would, uh, that was exposed allegedly detailed uh, a plan to uh, capture a random Australian citizen uh, and, uh, and possibly right in the centre of the city at Martin Place. Uh, that is unfolding before us now. Whether that plot, that plan is connected with the events happening right before us is unclear. Uh, it's certainly a great coincidence uh, at this stage. Look, we are waiting to hear more from the police. Uh, they haven't yet decided to give us any sort of briefing. Um, they obviously have their hands full trying to deal with this incident. It, um, it was interesting to watch as the, as the minutes tick by from the first uh, opening uh, uh, events here at about quarter to ten local time uh, as the the band the security band moved back further and further from Lint Cafe as the police realized just how serious it was and then I think it was our cameras that captured that shot of the ISIS flag the Islamic State flag and the headbands on the people inside uh, to obviously uh, raise this uh, to a, another level entirely um, the police, as I say, are watching through the windows as well. They might well be waiting for some form of communication. They might be trying to establish some communication uh, with the assailants inside to see what it is they want to do, what their demands may be. Uh, but right now we have a classic city siege situation and a terrifying one at that. Larry, Khan. Chris, at best estimate, at any given day in there, if we can maybe try and set the scene for people at home, it is a busy retail cafe selling chocolates, selling coffees. There is a, a baristas, but there's also a restaurant in there as well. So at best guesstimate, there would be at least maybe 15 to 20 staff. Would that be that we could be dealing with? And it is a beautiful day in Sydney. There could be, again, just guessing anywhere up to 30, at least 40 customers. If just trying to set the scene of what may be happening behind those marble walls, and you could be dealing with maybe up to 50 people inside, do you think? Yeah, I think that's probably accurate, Kylie. This is a very popular uh, cafe in the middle of the city. You can see the umbrellas and the seating outside. Uh, it is a spectacular Sydney day right now, the start of school holidays for many. Um, the city was buzzing this morning. And this is one of the go-to spots. Lint Chocolate, obviously one of the world's best brands, uh, and it's a treat for many people to go there. The, uh, the staff would number, as you say, at least 10. Uh, there are back rooms, kitchens and offices uh, behind the service counters, uh, and then in front of the service counters, just beside where those unfortunate people are standing with their hands in the air, there would be probably 10 uh, tables, each able to sit four people. So there's 40 plus 10 staff. There's 50 people at a rough guess uh, if the place was busy. And I'm assuming that on a day like today, it would have been busy. Um, the, 
Yeah, we've seen there at the windows, yeah, we're seeing some one person with a t-shirt, a lint staffed sufferer there and also possibly a customer beside them. So thoughts it, are with them it right appears, now. It appears, Rizzo, that uh, that flag has taken up a new position there. We can, it looks like it's coming across to the, the other window. We're, uh, we're, we're crossing now to uh, this coverage, of course, uh, will continue. and. Uh, here is uh, Laurel Irving. Because we're unclear what is actually happening, we are being evacuated. So what we want to do now is cross to our <coughs> Melbourne newsroom. Laurel Irving is in our Melbourne newsroom now. Laurel. Good morning. Thanks, Larry and Carly. Yes, we, we pick up this uh, 7 News special coverage of this unfolding crisis here in Laurel, Sydney. Laurel, can you hear us? We need to cross to you in Melbourne now. We're unclear of what is actually happening here in the Sydney newsroom because of the location. No. But we, we're All having right. trouble getting through to Laurel. We'll, we'll get to Laurel shortly. Yeah. Rizzo, just on... The, you mentioned before we haven't heard much from the police. In this uh, set of circumstances, you wouldn't Chris, would you expect to hear that much at this point? Um, it's all operational and they wouldn't want us to know. Larry, right now, it'd be totally operational. And I'd, I'd be, to be frank and to be uh, not being in any way rude to the police, I don't think they would know right now what is yes, happening I inside. Do. We'll be waiting for, for messages that uh, there will be translators working on that, uh, on that flag and to try and work out exactly what okay. it says. But, uh, yeah, All right, we'll, unknown. We uh, have our link now with Laurel Irving and the coverage, of course, continues right here on 7. Laurel? Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Kylie. And yes, uh, 7 News will continue this special coverage of this unfolding crisis in Sydney, where the Lint Cafe in Sydney's Martin Place is uh, currently the subject of what we believe is a terrorism activity. I'm joined in the studio by Nick Etchells. Nick, this is uh, pretty much our worst case scenario, isn't it? Look, this is something that authorities have feared for some time. We've been talking for uh, years now about what possible targets would exist for terrorists in Australia. We do not know that this is a terrorist siege, but certainly uh, there are some sinister signs there at Lent. This all unfolded about uh, quarter to ten, ten to ten this morning. What uh, initially seemed like a hold-up uh, dragged on for half an hour, 20 minutes, and then we saw uh, staff inside that Lent facility, right in the heart of Sydney, uh, right on Martin Place, force up against the windows. They had their eyes closed, they had their hands up, and then we saw a flag with uh, certainly Islamic writing on it uh, placed up against the window. We don't know what that said. We've got translators working on that. Uh, we, uh, there has been some suggestion that is an ISIS flag, but uh, we are working on confirmation of that. We also saw a man inside that building. We believe there may be two gunmen at this stage. One of them we saw on some footage earlier uh, with uh, Islamic writing on a black headband. Uh, now if you're just joining us we have a what we believe may be a hostage situation, possibly a terrorist hostage situation in Martin Place in Sydney. The pictures you're seeing are coming from our Martin Place studios. They are being remotely controlled. Uh, the voices you're hearing are myself, Nick Etchells and Laurel Irving in Melbourne. The Channel 7 officers in Sydney have been evacuated by police. Their front windows face directly across to where uh, this situation uh, uh, is unfolding and, and Laurel we understand that the buildings and areas around there have been evacuated. Look this is uh, this is a very busy time of year of course everybody's Christmas shopping a lot of schools have shut down so there are a lot of children around the, the centre of the city is a very busy time this time of year and uh, to be having a, a morning break in uh, in a chocolate shop as, as so many of us do and then for this to happen I think is just chilling and of course we first thought that this was simply an, an armed hold up scenario this morning and then when we saw those pictures of what appears to be an Islamic State flag in the window of, of the Lint Cafe. I, I think that was when a, a cold chill certainly went through me and, and we had a sense then of what this could become. Important to point out we've had no official word that this is ISIS related. There certainly is though a very large police presence in and around this area. We saw police go into the building a little earlier 
and then come out with their guns pointed but they were backing away so they've obviously gone in to try to have some to get some sort of sense of, of how this is playing and what the scenario is in there but uh, we're not sure of course what official communications are going on behind the scenes important to remember too I think that <coughs> that Australian officials and authorities are no doubt well trained for this sort of scenario. We've been talking for several years of course about the possibility of serious terrorist threats here in Australia and uh, these are scenarios that no doubt would have been played out many times in, in training scenarios which of course, is, of course is quite different but the, this is what people have been preparing for and, and we saw earlier this year that there were a number of arrests and that uh, Martin Place in, in those terrorism raids was named as a, as a potential target, Nick. They were, those raids took place, New South Wales uh, uh, Police in September this year uh, did simultaneous raids across Sydney uh, and, and stopped what they said was a plot to behead a random Australian in a public place, possibly Martin Place. We do not know at this stage that this scenario is in any way linked uh, to those threats. Uh, what we do know is uh, we, we are having to be very careful with the pictures we show you. Uh, we are leaving this on a wide shot. We do not know what is going to happen in that building. However, we do have people monitoring um, the situation and the cameras that can see more closely. And what we have seen in the last few moments is a, uh, one of the hostages against the window has been uh, told to sit on the ground and another hostage has come uh, and stood in their place. Now, we're hoping to cross again to Chris Reason uh, sometime soon, uh, just to recap on what's happened so far this morning. It began as what we thought was a hold-up situation in Lint Chocolate in Martin Place. This is a very popular holiday spot. It's one of the premium chocolate brands and they do a roaring trade at Christmas time in the school holidays. Families are in town, they want to pick up supplies, uh, stop for lunch. It's a very popular cafe spot. Uh, grab some chocolates for their Christmas celebrations. It was uh, mid-morning, late morning and quite busy as we understand in there. What we believe at the moment is happening inside that Lint uh, chocolate shop is two gunmen, at least two gunmen, we're yet to have confirmation on that. Obviously police are still dealing with the situation. They're still trying to ascertain for themselves what has gone on here, what they're dealing with and how best to move from here. Up to 12 hostages, we believe, are inside that store, including some of uh, the staff from Lint Chocolate. We have seen staff members up against the window. At about 10 to 10 this morning, we saw hostages uh, placed up against the windows. They had their hands in the air. They had their eyes closed. Some of them were forced to hold up uh, his flag with Islamic writing on it. Writing we are seeking to confirm uh, is or is not related to ISIS. This is certainly a place that ISIS has in the past threatened to target in Australia. We do not know if that's happening now. Channel 7, right across the, uh, right across the way from Martin Place, has been evacuated. In fact, the newsroom was the first to be evacuated. It has a glass front looking straight across into Lent. Uh, then the studios uh, and uh, obviously all the other administrative people inside Channel 7 have been evacuated. All of uh, the workers not involved in Lent who were able to be evacuated have been evacuated and police have set up a cordon around the building. Very soon, we'll be crossing to some reporters on the ground to see what they can uh, uh, what they can tell us about what's actually happening on the ground. We believe that away from the shot you're seeing on your screens, heavily armed police are in position. We don't know what their next moves are. Uh, certainly, they have in the previous months and years uh, gamed out situations like this. They've drilled situations like this, and we have specialist police uh, whose job it is to deal with situations like this.